Okay, today um, this tutorial is about the uh, synthetic particle image generation through the PIV lab. So again, we start the PIV lab software. So it's in here. And then I click. And some, which means it's starting up. Okay, so this is a PIV lab we have, and it's a uh, it's very well designed and it's quite est established now. And so the function we are using is a synthetic particle image generation, and so it's a very useful function of this software. And we click, and then goes to the settings. I would say particle. Uh, image is uh, very important because when you do experiment what you eventually receive is a particle image and so the quality of the particle image really determines how good your result is how good your velocity measurement so um, let's see how it works in here and basically we are working on this part so particle image generation, there are quite a few parameters. And this function <coughs> in here allows you to generate different kind of baseline flows. And in here we get one, two, three, four, five. First is a ranking vortex. The second is a Hamel Osing vortex. The third is linear shift. So it's kind of linear translation of the particle. And then we have the rotation of the flow. And the last is a membrane. So we just do the ranking vortex. And if you are interested, you can try the try the other options. <coughs> what they do, each select option do is um, use the mass functions to generate the particle displacement. Okay. This below the type of the flow, we have the image size x and y in the number of pixels so we can change the the number of pixels in here and so when we do experiment different cameras have different sensors so in here uh, x and y in pixels correspond to the sensor size for example if you are using a very um, uh, common um, PIV camera which is a sensitive cam camera and it has uh, 1024 pixels by 1024 pixels it is a square sensor if you are using a high-speed camera like the Fenton so it's uh, 1280 by 800 pixels and so different camera have different sensors so now we are keeping to be more straightforward and we are using a square sensor 1000 by 1000 so eventually get 1 megapixel 1 megapixels and this is a number of particles in here the default value gives us 200,000 particles and then the particle diameter is a ray and then we have the random size of the particle which is one what does that mean so number of particles is the number of particle you have and we will try different numbers later and see how it affects the quality of your image and uh, uh, it, the ideal number we, we, we can suggest the second is particle diameter so how large the particle shows up. So now I need to correct one thing. When we take the particle images, the particle won't show up as one single pixel. And that's exactly what we want to avoid actually. Because, and later on we will explain, I will explain why we should avoid that. And usually if the particle uh, appears in a single pixel, we call this phenomenon pick locking. And this pick locking effect is uh, should be prevented because it prevents the algorithm to the PIV algorithm to 
uh, extract a subpixel resolution okay and then the random size which is one in here by default one pixel and which means that the particle can be four pixels or two pixels diameter and the sheet thickness and so apparently it's uh, we are using the medium number so you can choose from 0 to 1 now we are choosing 0.5 the sheet thickness what does that mean I'm not so sure um, but I, I guess it's like the like in the experiment you want to make a decent size a thin size of the large thickness so perhaps it's something about that in here and also we can try this number by decreasing it or increasing it to see the different effect and the noise so 0 0.001 so what does that mean and so for noise when you use a camera to take images where when you have a particle recorded so you get intensity over there and while there is no intensity no particle so you should expect the uh, in the pixel there you have the intensity zero right but this is not the case in reality the camera has noise and the flow has and uh, the, the flow has noise so in those spaces without particles still you can read out some intensity so that's a noise so in here 0 0.001 is a very small value and if we can further decrease it and also increase it we'll see the difference so if we increase this noise number threshold number we will see more noise the, the, the image will become more noisy and the last is a random z position so which means uh, because the light has a certain thickness and since it it has third dimension then the particle has a chance to be um, placed at different locations in Z so that's the uh, randomness 10% in the other locations okay so since it's ranking vertical we're moving to the small box below the particle simulation box okay since it's we we choose the rank ranking vertex and if we click and we'll see two options single vertex and a vertex pair so now I'm doing vertex pair two vertices and if it's two there are two vertices and we need to determine the core radius the radius of the vertex and then the maximum displacement so the the particle displacement eight pixels and <coughs> so this is a very important parameter so when we do experiment we don't want the particle move too far away which means the displacement too large we don't want to move too large because otherwise we'll lose the coloration and usually we, we want to maintain for low speed flow it can be maintained within 10 pixels but for high speed flow like supersonic hypersonic if it's 20 pixel within 25 pixel is a good number and then we have vortex cores so that's the coordinates it's quite straightforward okay now we got understand what what are the meanings of all these options right and then we can click create images and then we can see a pair of images okay okay so we save the two images and we import it into another software called image J and if we toggle the image pair we can see it's moving and we say if we zoom in so we can see all the particles are separated we do see spacings this is actually the ideal image we prefer and we call this kind of medium particle den uh, particle density this is what we really preferred so we zoom out and now what I'm going to do is to change the parameter 
for example, the number of particles. And if I reduce by a magnitude, remove an, the arrow, and let me create. So we see it's much sparser. And I save these two images and I import it into image J again. And we can see the great difference. So this is a lower density, only 20,000 particles. And here we get 200,000 particles. So you see the great difference. And if I change uh, visualization, it would be better to see. Yes, and we see the motion of the particle, and this is 200,000 particles. This is 20,000 particles. And you can see if I zoom in, and these are apparently particles, and these are actually the noise. So you see they are not strictly black, but you still get some intensities there. So that's the noise. And when we do the coloration, this is called signal, and that's called the noise. So eventually, one thing to measure is the signal noise ratio, especially for cross coloration. Okay, so you see this lower density, medium density, and now I'm trying to exaggerate the data a bit by adding a, an extra. So let's see, this is the original default number, and if I increase one, that's too much, and uh, just uh, like this, by four times, 800,000, let's see what happens. Okay, so it, apparently now, it's still acceptable, but you see it's much, much um, more particles. And maybe it doesn't work for the explanation. Let me exaggerate again. Use that. So 2 million particles. And let me increase the generate. Because there are so many particles, it takes time to generate the part, uh, particle images even. OK. So you see the difference, right? Okay, again, I imported the image, new image pair with much, much more particles into image J. And we can see the motion of the particle, and it's much, much coarser. Mm, let me zoom in. So this is a zoom in. And now you can see all the particles are kind of merged together. It's like a cloud. And this is actually what we are not preferring in PIV. And this stand dense particle images because this will affect the um, again the cross coloration quality and this is low density and this is a high density and this is medium density so it, you can see um, from here we really prefer this type of quality of particle images okay so this is what for today as a summary um, we learned how to uh, use PIV lab, PIF lab to generate synthetic particle images and by playing some of the numbers and also in practice um, we prefer the medium particle density images. So and later on we will use this generated synthetic particle image to and to do to do some practice on the PIV vector calculation. Okay. Thank you then.